our question of the day, what can we do to stop racism? Well, that's a good question. I'll tell you what, a, a big thing with racism nowadays, I know it wasn't like this in the past, you know, since, let's say, since Martin Luther King uh, had passed on, uh, you know, we've came a long ways. God bless him, he did an amazing job here as far as uh, showing people to, to see things from their spiritual body. Uh, you know, Dr. King was a man where you could look at him and, and there's no way you'd look at him and think anything racial, right? He was probably much smarter than all of us were who were, who were alive at that time. Uh, and just an awesome man to put him put mankind ahead of himself, right? And I'm sure that he would want us to carry out that same tradition today as far as stopping racism. I tell you, when you really go to look at racism, though, you don't need to look, just look at... Uh... Right now, the good, a good chapter in the book that, that would pertain to racism, not saying that it still doesn't happen in individual cases or people aren't a little bit prejudiced based on what's happened in their life and stuff, which is, you know, hopefully we're moving forward with that and, and understanding would be, uh, let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Uh, this is the goal of all religion. Any, any religion that you're going to practice or, or come across, uh, all religions are basically good. It's just a matter of uh, the people and how they relate to and apply the religion. So basically, if we were going to say, what is religion, in, in one sentence, uh, Religion would be how you relate to God, right? The method and the uh, delivery system of where you relate to God, so you can, uh, you know, hopefully the ultimate the ultimate goal of any religion is to have God with us, right? So if you were a Christian, you'd want to be as much like Christ, so you would have an opportunity to have God with us, right? You'd be able to to relate to God perfectly or really well at least. Uh, but for racism. Or for pretty much anything like we were saying in general with religion, this will tie right in with with the theme of religion. So you really wouldn't have a problem, uh, you know, with people from all religions benefiting from the same teaching. And here, here's what Christ said here. And he said to them, "To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables." Right? He's going to tell you something right here. Watch this. He always talked in parables because it was the best way to teach and also get your mind working kind of like Christ did, right? He would go into layers with things, so when he came up to one of those Pharisees or government people, you know, he wouldn't get in a long debate back and forth. He would just, boom, right? This is the way it is, and I'll backtrack from here, and then you won't ever try to, you know, you're not going to try to mess with me again or change the truth around or make a big story out of something that's not supposed to be, okay? So he said, come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, right? Seeing they may see and not perceive, I mean, we all see something, right? What, people, what we perceive is the actual impact that event, circumstance, actual thing could have on humanity versus what does it mean to me right now, right? Same with this stuff, right? The whole goal behind Christianity, I know that it, it, for, for a lot of people, God bless them, they've been able to get what they needed out of that and, and go on and move forward with their life. But the whole goal behind Christianity was for you to look at the time that you lived in similar to that of, like, Jesus Christ. It's just updated, right? And, and, and nowadays, since we've been through several generations since then, if we can master this, then we'll be able to get that spiritual guidance and actually have, have even more power because we're going to have Jesus with us. We're going to have Dr. King with us. All those people that died in Christ are part of the vine. And we can pick up on that and really... Uh, move forward a lot faster and it's a lot easier time than when those guys were around because there was so much racism, so much hate, so much pridefulness and nowadays we're pretty much at the end saying, you know what, mankind's having a hard time or running the whole world, right? We want to save America, fix that, uh, fulfill any prophecies as far as over in the uh, Middle East, as far as their relationship to, to the messenger of God making a better life for them, right? So Christ said, uh, the people nowadays, I mean, we're going to do a test in a little bit here to see if we perceive or not. And hearing, they may hear and not understand, right? I mean, any problem you've got, there's no possible way that you would let it, uh, 
you know, trickle into, into something as big as it is now where you're actually arguing over individual problems instead of the ideal way to fix things, right? And actually the ideal result, which is to have more people doing things, and, and whether it's jobs, whether it's, uh, you know, their own business, doing things that, that they're utilizing the talents in life so they feel a little bit more fulfilled. So when you, when, you, when you go away from that, you'll see more and more people don't do that, more and more people are able to find a job, period, and then more and more people are frustrated in this life when they really shouldn't be. And they definitely shouldn't be because their leaders aren't representing them. Okay? Then he says, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Jesus said one more thing after this. Do you not understand this parable? How then will you not understand all the parables? So if you don't understand this parable and you can't perceive what's actually happening, how can you understand all the parables because you don't have understanding at all on how to relate to what's God sending you this message on what to do, right? So whoever understands all the parables could be the Christ, right? During their time that they lived in, right? And we, we have had uh, that, that spirit come back down here, you know, several times with different people, but for various purposes and various different levels, right? We've never actually had the second actual Christ come down. And, uh, you know, when he comes down, he's going to be a teacher. He's going to be a mediator. Uh, he's going to fix all things, right? So we say that Christ will fix all things. He's going to take care of uh, racism. Now he's going to take care of racism is we're going to get to one of the leading causes of racism, right? Which was, uh, there, there's several. The, the leading one, obviously, has always been, and, and there was a vow from the, from the really deep people in the uh, church that they were going to keep marijuana illegal until the Christ appeared again, right? And to be honest with you, I saw some amazing things, and, and knowing the prophecy, and obviously living almost to a T, the exact same life that Jesus from the Bible led, which might not be that fascinating, you know, as far as CEO material, but as far as uh, understanding all the people that you've come across and being able to relate the message to them and them also uh, understanding and being able to put it into use for themselves was uh, very fulfilling, right? And now we're going to go over a little bit of that with you guys. So the, the main teaching of Christ, right, well, we're going to talk about perception here, right? Here he goes. This is from Matthew 15, chapter 8, or uh, verse 8, sorry. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And then Jesus goes on. Now what goes into the mouth defiles a man, not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. The disciples came to him and said that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying, right? Because he was challenging their authority here. He had the authority of God. He knew what was right and wrong, all the moral laws of the universe, everything, right? And he said, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. So Jesus will talk in reverse parables. you got to remember this word had to make it down through the generations, right? And it still had to get the point across where enough believers could understand it enough to say, you know what? We need to keep this alive, right? Whether it be that cannabis plant was able to keep alive and we got more and more people that understood it through the doctrine. And that's part of the reason why America has been so amazing, right? We bring the Indian hemp seed here. We planted it. We were able to, to understand Christianity. And, and until, you know, 1937, we went way downhill with the Industrial Revolution and everything. Here we go again. And, you know, there was good reason for that. I know that one of the main reasons for uh, marijuana to be criminalized, you know, was, like anything else, we're still, we're still evolving as people, was racism, you know, because uh, people were seeing things through their spiritual bodies. Now we're ready for it. Before, in 1937, it was a little bit of a culture shock to people, and uh, they didn't like the fact that, that basically legalizing cannabis made white and black basically equal, right? Because you were seeing things from your spiritual body. You weren't seeing the white and the black. You're still going to be, you call it judging if you want, judging people based on their actions and how they treat other people. You're supposed to judge that, right? You never judge a person. You judge how they treat other people, right? If you see something wrong with it, you say something, right? One of the things I see obviously wrong with it is obviously our government is judging many, many people because they've made marijuana. They've, they've let marijuana be, be illegal for the people that need it most. And then look at the racism, is it still in today? 
Look at all these kids that get their, their lives ruined. It's like 80-some 80, 80 percent, right, of these black kids that are good kids, man, that are trying to, you know, make a couple dollars actually providing a service to somebody else, right? When you're talking about marijuana, right? Uh, and that's wrong. Maybe they're giving it to someone that's sick. Maybe they're giving it to someone that has a problem, whatever it is. It's always wrong. That's, that's it, right? Here we go. Do you not understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. Now Jesus is telling me in reverse here. He just got done. You've got to understand the teacher better, right? And I know most people don't because they're busy and they're going through this quick and they're good people and they treat other people that way. That's good enough for you, right? But as Christians, and even not as Christians, as religious people and as atheists, whatever you want to call it, right? As people that want to do what's right for one another. This is the biggest law to put behind us. And then our country truly can move ahead and uh, utilize one of the resources that's the best for all the people. Uh, and not think about money when you do it. Ready? Uh, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. So these are bad. Actually, cannabis obviously does the opposite of these, right? You don't go and kill people. You don't have evil thoughts. None of the rest. You're all good to go, right? These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man, right? You know, this was a big thing. These guys back then, you have to know a little bit about religion. And like I said, I've been doing religious studies for about seven years pretty intensely. Uh, they considered cannabis to be like the ultimate sacrament where the high priest would do it uh, as their way of making a better connection to God, right? So what they did is, uh, you know, they had certain laws governing it. It used to be just for the high priest. And back in Christ's time, what he did was he actually made it for, uh, when they were on those journeys, the men and not women and children. A good, good example of that, of Christ actually talking about that, would be here in... Uh, Here we go. He's going to talk about this. He says, So the multitude... Here we go. You see, everything's about the cannabis in the whole Bible, though. So, so you don't really have to pick and choose. You can read through the whole thing if you want. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the lame made whole, the lame walking, the blind seeing, and glorified the God of Israel. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have continued with me three days and have nothing to eat, and I do not want to see them go away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Then his disciples said to him, that Where could we get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a great magnitude? Right? You know, spiritual bed. You've been with me three days. I want to see us all feel good and chill out, right? Here we go. And he's always gonna, Jesus always has to use these parables because he knows most people think about themselves way before they would get this in depth with the scripture to be able to come up with the way that he actually felt, taught, lived, healed, did everything, right? And that's what, that's what happens. Then his disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude? Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few little fish. Think about this. Remember we used to do exercise like this in school where there'd be something to the side, right? And a few little fish, right? Take your mind off the subject, right? How, many, how much bread do you have, right? The fish is in, of no consequence here. <coughs> because two fish isn't going to feed that many people no matter who you are, right? And Jesus was never a person about abracadabra magic. Always teacher, right? Teacher so you guys wouldn't need to have all these problems you get today, right? So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks to them. Broke them and gave them to his disciples. I want to give you an example of what he actually did.
All right, so Jesus Christ got... We're going we're gonna to hit that part again because I had to take a little break here. So Jesus Christ, here's what he did. Here we go. We're going to talk about the bread, right? This is, this is a huge right here. This is when the, so when they say he took bread and broke it, this is my body. It's an insult. We're going to change all that anyway. The church knows who, that I am the Messiah and that's it, right? As far as not even religion like that. As far as I have come in the name of the Lord and I'm ready to teach and no one can go against it. So obviously it's the truth and that's it, right? We always offer, we offer people any opportunity they want to refute anything I'm saying, right? But you have to do it. And then you have to explain why that it's not true. And I'll explain to you why the whole thing's true. Why this is the number one uh, travesty in human history and the only reason for it is so we could get back, God back down here, right? And that's what they did. And you know what? Technically it works, right? And we had Dr. King down here and he was definitely representing the Father very nicely there, right? So, here we go. Let's stay on focus here. So we got, uh, I have compassion on the multitude, that part. How many loaves do you have? And they said, seven, and a few little fish. We talked about that. You know, the few little fish thing is one of those diversion tactics, which you have to do to get the book through the, throughout the generations. But it's really clear when your focus is right, and you find out what the Christ was all about. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them and gave them to his disciples. So here's an example of that, right? I don't want to waste this stuff, because obviously it's harder to get now that, you know, we have to go back. 5,000 years and make something illegal because we want to see God again, right? So Christ, let's see if we got a good piece here. Here we go. So Jesus, this is all, sorry man, this is a little piece because, you know, I don't have that much here. It's illegal to, to, to practice what, what Christ said nowadays. Okay, ready? He says, uh, I've had compassion on the multitude. And then he says, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few fish. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And when he took the seven loaves and the fish, and he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples, and they gave the, and the disciples gave them to the multitude. So Jesus has a bigger piece, obviously big loaves, right? To be able to feed that many people spiritual bread, right? He breaks it every time, right? Everybody takes a little piece, enough to get, you know, this, have enough spiritual bread they need. And you can see that that easily would this little piece here, they're coming in big loaves like this, would easily would feed 4,000 people, right? And then you can see why at the end, right? Someone took their little bit, had it in their instrument to be able to use this and have that relationship with God to where the message of Christ could get through a lot deeper and everybody could understand it and then they could pass it on, right? Because these guys didn't have the luxury of going and uh, maybe to church every Sunday. Obviously, this was a one-time thing where we had to have your focus to get the message on so this could get through to the people. And it would never get shut out. And that would be the only, only way that God could get down here is if that was our focus, right? We know that the people that, that uh, wrote this book, right, were able to make it. So if that was your focus, right, and God had called you to follow that path, you could be led by the Spirit. And through enough people teaching you and your focus on learning, you could be, become absolute one with Jesus Christ, right? And you would understand all these things like you wrote them. Because technically, you would have that same spirit you did. right? So we've accomplished that. Now it's just the fact, holding our representatives accountable then. But here we go. So we broke the bread. We can obviously see why that we'd want to take up the fragments because they're still good for use for next time, right? We, you know, we're going to conserve everything, right? And this is about probably what we'd be looking at. You know, these guys would have tons of these fragments, right? Little pieces from the bread. They would take their piece of bread off keep the fragments, and, and we'd, we'd, we'd recycle them for next time. You know? Pretty amazing stuff. But here we go. So they ate, and all were filled, and they took up seven large baskets full of fragments that were left. So you, we're going to at least say this, guys. I don't like people wasting time, especially when people are suffering out there, and this is the number one root cause of all problems to society and mankind. It's because when you cover up one of God's blessings... 
it takes away from everything beyond it. It's kind of like in football. You take away your center, one of your best players, right? Everybody else has to compensate and play a little bit more to make up for the guy that's not quite as strong, right? That's what happens here. Because right here, you're, you're taking away from people's be able to focus on other people, other things, and their ability to perceive in truth, right? Which does happen. And, and for us to trade that off for, wow, just being busy is an insult to the people that want it. Anybody that wants it, marijuana is obviously not illegal like that, right? Man made it illegal, uh, and we need to change that, right? For other people, even if you don't do it now, or especially if you do, don't be paranoid about it. We want a true census, right? We want a census of who believes that marijuana is smoking and, and it should be available, or, or however way people want to do it, it should be available to all the people, right? Remember the story of the census when Jesus was a baby? Well, he wanted you to t go to the end of your book, right? Go to the end of your mountain like Dr. King did. Come back down, right? To right back where you started from. Right? That's the ultimate thing we can do in this lifetime. And if, if we do it on this one topic, we'll see a lot more clearly on other things. Let's finish, let's finish it up, though, because these guys have been putting this off for a long time here. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets full of fragments that were left. Now those who ate were 4,000 men. Now here's where we're going to talk about the breakdown of why they, that it became illegal in the first place. Besides women and children, right? So if it was regular bread, which we're over that, right? You wouldn't take up fragments of regular bread like this. And this is what you do with this stuff, which is obviously with the Christ. Man of peace, love, joy. Wanted to see people have their relationship with the spiritual father in heaven. Would obviously be for this, and we know that, right? We just didn't want to do anything and put ourselves out there. But that's where if we're Christians... We're going to come back with Christ through his life and then take a census at the end, right? We'll see who's for it and who's against it, right? And you got to do that because the people won't represent you if, if it's, if we don't. It's too bad. They Obviously, they shouldn't even sit in a church. I would feel guilty sitting in a church, right? If I went against everything that the, that the teacher taught, right? But you're going against everything with them, right? But we'll keep going with it to make sure it sets in, Ready? Jesus is moving on. He wants to teach us another important lesson. You could read this to your purple in the face, right? Once you perceive, and you're able to perceive and have enough life experience to do that to where you can perceive accurately all things that come, right? Then, you, then you're going to be able to take a look at the time you live in. So Jesus is telling these guys, right, they're religious, going to the church for an hour a week, just focusing on their life, right? That's fine as long as you stick up for other people to spend a certain amount of time focused on your own life. Here we go. When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the face of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Right? Jonah was three days, three nights in the belly of a whale. Right? You know, these guys can't... If you can't take all the parables of life, God sends down parables all the time through his servants, right? And through people that aren't even his servants, right? All, the, all our bodies, we'll realize it after we realize, you know, we, maybe how important something really wasn't to us and we got all stressed out and let it work us up and everything else. All our bodies inside is that spirit body and that's running everything. That's running the show, right? That runs the person that you actually are, right? And we talked about at the beginning, we, we're doing two things, racism, cannabis, right? I'm going to add more at the end and solve all of them, right? To whether we don't have to waste any more time on these. But with the racism part, you know, after you've lived that life, and it is a little bit different. Let's say you're the you're a black kid and the only kid in the school or only kid in the classroom, right? It is a, does make it feel a little bit different. The couple times that I have went to church, I went to see a really good preacher, and I was it was only like four or five white people there, right? But I feel I'm in the spiritual body anyways, right? Unless I'm around really bad people, whether they're white or black, I mean, hey, you know, I'm back to being straight too like that, right? But I'm saying I'm trying to maintain the spiritual body feel and help other people achieve that same level of growing that. But that is tough, and a lot of times if you can get the right, uh, someone to just, they can talk to you while you're in your spiritual body, right? Because it's tough to do with your regular friends, get on that level, right? A lot of people don't like to go there, right? 
then you'll realize it is our perception now, if we're black, right, uh, or white, but, but if you're a black, uh, even older guy, 30, 35, you realize mostly that's our perception now, right? So we're kind of getting over that. But how we can finish the deal is hold our, our leaders and representatives accountable, white, white, black, Jesus was talking to all spiritual bodies, for fixing this one thing that he was so huge for, right? And then it it's, it's goes on and on and on, right? He goes here, watch this. Oh, you of little faith, why do you not, why do you reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Teaching here, right? But you got to really think like this and look into it. Do you not understand or remember the five loaves or the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up, right? Right? How many fragments you took up, right? How is it, no, no, here it is. Do you not understand and remember the five loaves or the 5,000, how many baskets you took up? Right, remember you have this fragment still, right? We don't want to spill them because they're expensive from here because they're illegal, right? How many large baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took up? How is it you don't understand and that I speak not to you concerning bread? but to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees of the government, right? He wasn't talking just about this. This is the backbone of all the other things, right? Because it opens up everybody's mind to seeing the truth. Right now, obviously, these guys don't see the truth, right? If you had 200 people that were that smart all together, would they really be in conflict over one or two issues and have to all meet up again the next day? Wouldn't that be ridiculous? If we saw the truth, right? If we saw what actually happened, the subject involved, and what's the best method for fixing that, which is the only way to tackle each individual circumstance anyways, right? Right? Then even on something like that, we would say for the president, what he said with the uh, financial stuff, we would say, well, for the 98%, we've deemed this is obviously the best way to do it. That's a done deal, right? You would never, you would never hold those 98% hostage for 2% so you could try to get your own stuff. Your job would always be to go from the bottom to the top as far as who you represented, right? Who's going to be most impacted by this, right? Even Especially with this stuff. That's what happens, why we have to make it completely legal so we don't go through this ever again. Because right now, I could call my mom on the phone. She's 63 years old. And uh, she technically couldn't use marijuana if I didn't prescribe it for myself, right? Uh, and that's a shame how many more people are like that. So for me, just to you know, take care of her, and then I can't get to every person, that would be wrong, right? And it would go against everything I believe in in the Scripture and everything that we all believe in as Christians, right? We might not have been focused on that before, but once we heard the truth, that was it, right? Okay, so all this information here, right? We already said with President Obama with the, uh, with the tax thing, that's not even... They're going to do that anyways. No one in their right mind would go against all the people like that, I wouldn't believe, would they? And these are the people that sit in the church, right? Can you believe it? I believe it, and I know that it's ridiculous, but it's, it's the way it is. Because they want, they're trying to make themselves feel good. They're feeding that God, right? God does, is with them too, right? But his focus is way off, right? When God's here, he wants to perceive what's actually happening. Because that's what his teacher said, right? That's the last time where God says, you know what? Dr. King too, obviously, right? where God came down here and started teaching, right? And the people weren't quite ready before with Dr. King to go this quite this far with it, right? Where he was getting ready to go. He was getting ready to teach the exact same stuff I am right now. He started talking about from the book of Daniel, right? And they didn't want that back then because that would have been a, quite a transformation where you're overcoming racism altogether and then you're also going to introduce this other thing that, that's going to make it happen even a little bit faster. Now, that's going to happen a little bit faster for that smaller group of people that are actually in there and say, I can't believe we actually thought like this, right? But for that way up high percentage, right, they weren't ready to see that yet, that, that kind of crossing like that. Let's see what this is. This is probably a good call here because this is a guy, black, happens to be a black guy. Amazing story. Hey.
Good? You know what's you know what's you know what's amazing, man. I was just talking about you about the uh, transformation you had in life, man. Yeah. That was pretty impressive, man. Oh wow! Wow! wow. I'd put you against anybody now doing this job. And I'm glad you're able to hang in there and do it, dude. <laughs> it's not easy, but I've managed to hang in there. You did good. Yeah. See what else we can come up with, man. And if you got any. Uh... Well, well, let me tell you what I got. Let me tell you what I got. Okay. Why don't you just come over here? Come over here. All right. All right. Wait, hello? Yes, sir. Over here means your house, right? Yeah, I'm here now. I'm, I'm trying to do this, get this video out of the way, man. I've been putting it off for fucking seven years, man. I'll have to scratch that part. Sound good? Yeah, I know. That's why I got to get this out of the way, because I'm, you know, I feel like I'm going three different directions. Okay, I'll see you when you get here. All right. Bye. That was interesting time, man. Like I said, I don't know how to cut these things, so we're going to have to just pretty much rock with it live, I guess. The, uh, like I said, though, man, the Sermon on the Mount, ultimate teaching of Jesus Christ, you guys already got the other one. So, I mean, you should be, that should be enough, right? Ultimate teaching of Christ, though, people don't even know they don't even set the setting. You have to have respect for the Christmas holiday, for any holiday, even if you're not a Christian, and set respect for the setting of the teacher giving his greatest lesson, right? So the guy's saying here, look at, and seeing the multitudes, people are down here hearing about how awesome this guy can fix everything, any personal problem you got, obviously these things with, with curing it with, with cannabis, with uh, healing people of a lot of different stuff, with many different tactics, right? Obviously he wouldn't take this one out of his bag like we have, right? For all our people, right? Here we go. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountains. And when he seated, his, dis his disciples came to him, right? So 12 guys, Jesus sitting here just like I'm sitting here with you guys, right? And this is when he started. Are you ready? Keep in mind the focus the whole time, like I told you guys, the gospel had to get through so this cannabis could get through to us and benefit all these things the guy's saying here. Ready? He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? Right? We're going to go over that one one more time. When Jesus Christ says blessed, though, and the people are thinking kingdom of heaven, he's not saying to wait till you die to bless these people and to fix the problem for these people when you come across these people. When did he do it? Well, he got it. Right when he met him, he did it. He didn't tell them to call him back in three weeks, right? So watch and keep that in regard the whole time, please. Because when I hear heaven and I see the people, I'm going to go to die and float around in heaven. Here we go. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Meek meaning teachable here. Meek meaning people that weren't so set in their own ways, looking for the truth. You know what I mean? Meek, open. Not weak by any means. He, Jesus Christ was never weak or talked about being weak. They shall inherit the earth. Look at all the problems we're having right now with all these things. Cannabis cures a lot of those things because you're not cutting down these trees all the time. You save your trees and able to have all the different options. Regardless, right now, I hope we've gone far enough to where we just make it completely legal and stop this game, right? And don't sit in a church on Christmas if you're not voting for cannabis to be legal, right? That's wrong. And it, ultimately, no matter how far you go down, your perceptions are, and then uh, you're going to judge inevitably, right? Because we messed up enough. We couldn't regulate it. We, we, all the people are starving for it. It didn't work. You know, we just couldn't do it. This, this solves all problems, right? And it definitely solves our... Best thing we could do for, for national defense is make sure our neighbors are happy and content over there, right? And maybe they'll be less likely to reproduce it quite as fast because they'll be able to, to take in some of the stuff a little bit better and then not feel that need to. Be a little bit more spiritual on their own. Not feel the need or compelled to live life through several other people or even one other person all the time. And that's how it works. Here we go. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Righteousness meaning what's right for other people, right? This is not right for other people the way they're doing it right now. And God is very pissed off about it. Bless 